Drinking alcohol is something a lot of us do. We drink for different reasons, in different places. Pubs, the clubs, summer barbecues, watching the TV. In this documentary, I'll be going over why people drink, why they feel they might need to drink, what benefits it has, and what defects it might have. I'm Richard Platt, and I'm presenting my documentary, Living With Alcohol. I've been able to get an interview with a woman named Rebecca Hargreaves. She's actually one of my friend's mothers. She was able to tell me about her career within nursing at hospitals, as well as being a school nurse and school counsellor. Um, hi, I'm Rebecca Hargreaves and I um, trained as a nurse in the early 90s and worked in an A&E department in central London from 1993 to 1999. Um, and then, uh, since then, have worked in various settings, nursing, but now I'm a counsellor in school. As a school counsellor, what does the job in, entail? Well, working as a counsellor, so basically they're in times of anxiety and stress for, for pupils. So I can see somebody on a one-off occasion because they're feeling stressed or anxious about something specific. Mm. Or we can do a longer piece of work around deeper family issues or, or things that are consistently worrying them. What impact has alcohol had while in your career of being a nurse? Yeah, well, working as an a &E nurse in central London, I certainly saw a huge amount of alcohol. What, what, what uh, hospital was that? Chelsea and Westminster Hospital. Okay. Um, so, yeah, which is based on Fulham Road, so it's yeah. a very central part of London with a lot of bars and a lot of social activity. So uh, working shifts in an A&E department, regularly at weekends and evenings mm -hmm. and nights, you'd see a huge amount of alcohol-induced injury. And um, often it would be, fights would be created because of the amount of alcohol it consumed. And then injuries would always be worse because people weren't able to stop themselves from falling or prepare themselves for falling because they were drunk. Do you think more people are drinking now? Or do you think it's an overhyped media thing? Well, it's interesting because I've read more in the media recently about, about Generation Z, X and Z, Y, whichever ones it is, not consuming large amounts of alcohol and not binge drinking in a way that in a way that previously has been yeah. um so i don't know but i think it's become an, a, an accepted norm that 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 people drink consistently more than they probably used to 30 years ago you wouldn't have wine in the fridge in the in the fridge all the time mm. you would get a bottle of wine for a special occasion yeah. you would have wine with a meal if you went yeah. out whereas now if you speak to particularly, well not just women, but certainly a lot of my generation, most people drink on a daily basis. It might only be one or two glasses, yeah. but most people do drink. So I think as we become an aged, an, an aging population, the effects of long-term alcohol consumption over our lifetime will start to have increased effects on our health. What are some of the effects alcohol has to the body mentally and physically? Okay, so um, well, we all know liver disease. Mm -hmm. L liver, the liver is the is the place that the enzyme is produced. Is that, is that the most common thing that you come across? That's that's long term alcohol use so that's been affects drinking. your liver. So when you overwhelm your liver with alcohol, it can't break it down, and it can't. The enzymes aren't able to be produced quickly enough to break the alcohol down. So it damage gets stored in the liver and damages the liver. So that's a sort of long-term use. But short-term, it's a mental impairment, so re people aren't able to remember things as, as well. Uh, it can be injury, so injury is a significant factor to alcohol use, mm -hmm. people hurting themselves. Um, death, people doing stupid things when, they're, when they feel they're invincible because they're drunk. Uh, you know, all these things have a huge impact, but on a, on a sort of, just a sort of like a regular, so weight gain is a significant impact of alcohol use. Uh, skin disorder, so so spots and and you know just general not looking after your body. 
how do you feel about the social aspect of alcohol? Well, it's interesting, isn't it? Because I see alcohol use as a much more acceptable form of drug use. So it is effectively a drug. Because it is the most common used drug. Exactly, it is the most commonly used, the most easily accessed drug. Mm. Um, as we know, it is. it can be lethal mm. and it can have life-changing effects. But yet, as a, as a nation, we perceive it to be much more acceptable than other drug use because other drug use is illegal for whatever reason. But actually, I would question, if you really looked at the statistics, I would probably say that alcohol causes more issues for the society than low-grade drug use does, as in marijuana, smoking. So I think it's very interesting that we are very accepting of alcohol as a social drug, yet we are not accepting of other drugs. They're still illegal. But I think that alcohol probably causes more harm than those other drugs. Do you have any idea of how many people are admitted to hospital because of alcohol at the moment? Well, I, be- yeah. I believe that the, the last sort of known statistics were in 2018, and it was approximately 1.3 million people are admitted to into hospital through either primary or secondary alcohol use. Okay. So, so something, whether it's whether being drunk is the first reason or because of their drinking they are unwell, 1.3 million people have had to be admitted and use the NHS because of their alcohol consumption. Do you think, do you think that's sort of worthwhile? Obviously, that, that's not, not really worthwhile time and money, really. Well, it's a question, isn't it? Because should we as, should we as a state, yeah. I guess the question could be, should we as a state be spending so much money Mm -hmm. on people that are misusing Mm. their bodies by drinking too much alcohol and then needing to be hospitalized yeah but it's a it's a challenging question because it's it's like it's everybody can mess up regardless even if it's not alcohol exactly um and it's just where everybody and also a state provided health service is there is, is expected to be there to look after you no matter what and no matter what you have done, it's not a judgment. It's available for you when you need it. So nobody is there to judge whether you are admitted because of drug use or alcohol use or something else. I've been able to get an interview with a man named Brian Kelly. He has had alcohol in his life mostly every day. I asked him a series of questions on how and what part it's played in his life and what he thinks of it. What drew you to alcohol? What was your first drink that you remember? From what I can remember, my, I mean, all, my dad was a quite heavy drinker mm. and uh, there was always booze around the house, especially in one particular locked cupboard. And on a, uh, the prelude to Christmas, he'd always get a delivery. I was about 12 years of age and I, I found the key to that cupboard mm. and uh, I probably drank about half a bottle of sherry at the age of... 12. Yeah. Uh, from what I can remember, I was found unconscious behind the sofa. And uh, duly told off by my mother about that. And that's probably my first occasion yeah. of finding drink. Yeah. And uh, I suppose it just continued from there. Is there a history of drinking within the family? Well, as I say, I've got four brothers, two older, two younger. Mm. Um, We all drink, um, as I said to you, but my dad liked to drink as well. And uh, I suppose I grew up in a a culture of people who who drank. It was just part of uh, of life. You know, uh, there was a pub just round the corner from where we lived in Harlesden. And when I got to the age where I looked old enough, I guess I started drinking pints of beer in there. Why do you like to drink? As I say, it's probably a culture that I grew up in and I'm probably still in that culture now. Yeah. Um, I love going to a pub. You know, you can meet friends there, you can meet work friends there and talk about business or work. Uh, well, I drank in a pub in Wembley uh, called the Norfolk Arms. Mm. Um, had a lovely 
manageress there called Helen, who I'm still good friends with, even though she's retired now. Uh, but in the 40 years, probably every girlfriend I had was a barmaid in that pub. Yeah. I was in there every day, yeah. after work, weekends. When football started to be shown on the screens in pubs, that drew me in there as well. But uh, I probably drink every day of my life. Yeah. In fact, I know I do. Yeah. 